Hey guys, welcome back, welcome back, John Megacycle here, another episode of the Motley Craft server, new Feed the Beast 1.7.10. We got some new members to the group, we got uh, Alchemos, Joshimus, Jag, me, Andreon, Hockey Girl, Spectral, and I think that's it, but that gets us, let's see, two, four, six, Eight, that gets us eight, that's pretty darn good. And we've had someone on, uh, Alchemos is on right now. We've had someone on fairly regularly. It's nice to see our little community is starting to shape up a bit. So that's actually nice to see. Um, I think this is the highest populated uh, Motley Craft server has ever been. That might sound really silly, but it's always been like the same three or four core people. Now we're actually getting some more members, which is awesome. Uh, new stuff, new stuff. This area is the same except for this. I've been working with computer craft. So this is a really simple computer craft application that I wrote up. All I really want to do with this is I want to spit out a bunch of rules whenever someone first comes on the server and they have to at least read what's going on. So uh, welcome to the Motley Craft server. Select an option. One for rules, two for announcements. This is really simple. So hit one for rules. It pipes it out to the monitor. I just started working with this last night. So you'll have to forgive me. This isn't nearly as sophisticated as it could be, but I'm getting there. Uh, I'm hoping to do the buttons, the graphical buttons, so you don't have to go to the computer and hit an option. But uh, real simple, a violation of the Motley Craft server rules will lead to being banned from the server and being made fun of on Twitter and or G+. Follow the rules, have fun. So I just really wanted to get out some real simple stuff. And then if we reboot the machine, I have it so the actual startup script is the main menu of this. So right now the applications aren't tied into each other. They're just very simple. All, it, all it's doing is plotting text on the screen. So yeah, right now when you hit one, you're calling a different application called one. And this is work, this works pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of frills to it. If you understand programming, um, it's not that difficult. I'll show you my code. Uh, all I have right now, really simple. Clear the screen, set the position, redirect it to the monitor, clear it again so that way we're clearing whatever's on the screen, set the position again to make sure it's in the right spot, display some text, and that's it. It's very straightforward stuff. I think uh, Direwolf, uh, Direwolf 20 had a good tutorial on some of the intro to it. And uh, as a computer programmer, really, once you learn a language once, it's just really picking up the syntax and the verbiage of a different language to really get your head wrapped around it. But I mean, programming's programming. It's not It's not that hard once you get the core concepts down. Uh, here we are at Sanctuary. I'm going to take to the sky for this. Uh, I don't think anyone's claimed any new plots, but Spectral has gone ahead. He started to work on a bell tower, uh, which is quite impressive. So what he did is he took his 2 by 2 so he had four plots, and which is allowable, he knocked out all the insides. So this allows for still a main street for people to walk around and keeps him within the chunks. So if we take a look, I hit F9, uh, I can hit F9 again, and see how all of his territory remains in the chunks with the one outlying uh, space for the sidewalk. So if we go to a different chunk, that puts the sidewalk at two wide which doesn't make it cramped at all. It makes it still really easy for travel. So this is looking really nice as a start. And this is our first sanctuary structure. Um, aside from that, I've gone ahead and I've added some walls on the outside just to start to give it more of a, a settlement kind of a feel to it. So I think I decided on cobblestone brick, really, right? Cobblestone wall, yeah. Then I put these railcraft, or no, what is it? Railcraft stone lanterns, lanterns yeah, the looking. Uh, since I'm morph and I'm only half the size of my normal person, if I look at the lantern, or what is it called? Yeah, lantern. It actually looks one square down. So you notice now that I'm looking at the wall, it says I'm looking at a square block. So it's a little iffy there. So yeah, if I look up into space, it thinks I'm looking at the lantern. So, eh, either way. Uh, let's see. Other additions that I've had for the front here is I added maps. So I've gone through and I've added this little map here. And this is just two maps, real simple. And it's a perfect representation of what's going on. Now, if any of this needs to be updated, all you got to do is you got to pop it off, put it in your inventory, do a little flying around, and it should update on its own. Now, I don't know if this is actually going to update. Uh, I don't think so. 
I'll update it a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is all you've got to do considering the map really redraws itself every time you come across a new area. I mean, it's just like what a real map ought to be. I mean, you can't predict changes and the changes just aren't going to pop on a map. So you just have to take it off and it emulates as if you're redrawing everything. So we come back here, pop that back on, looks perfect. Good representation. It's starting to get nighttime. Um, so I'll make sanctuary quick. Uh, yeah, just gone through, added a bit of wall here, some simple lighting, just try to, you know, give it a little more of a homey feel to it. And I'm not too sure what we're going to add. Like for public utilities, I'd like a, a power company or something. I wouldn't mind adding a few things to add light to the to the area instead of, I mean, just glowstone would be an easy fix. Um, but I'd like to do something a little more creative. Uh, then, of course, for Sanctuary Central, this is how far I got also. I added a quick map, and the cool thing is the little marker is exactly where you place the map. So it's a you are here marker, which really looks cool. Um, I don't think I've done anything with Central or North. Yeah, these have all been the same. I don't see any plots being captured from territory. I mean, no one's come in here and claimed it. So, so far so good. I'm really happy to see at least one structure come out. Uh, let's see, we've been on the server for three weeks now? Something like that. So it's really cool to see someone actually going in and starting to build build stuff. Wait a minute. Do I have a cape? Oh, yeah, this was a dinner bone announcement. I think everyone got the scrolls cape because of the new release of scrolls. And I got a turtle on my head. Uh, let's see. This, that's cool. I've never had a cape before. Uh, so I would normally spend time going to every single person's base, but I kind of want to leave that for any new players to discover. We've got some really awesome, awesome, awesome stuff that's going on. Uh, we've got... I don't want to spoil it. Uh, but let's get to my base. Now, if you remember last time, I froze it here because I didn't want to expose my entrance. And I'm still going to keep that rule. So what I've done is I built a very small house, very simple. And this is not my actual base, but this is the cover for the base. So I'm going to walk in, I'm going to show you what I've got exposed and what's what, and that's really going to be it. Then I'm going to cut the recording and then I'm going to go to my base, but it's through here. And uh, I just don't want everyone in my base. <laughs> I'll show it, I'll show it. It's not that big of a deal, but uh, I'm going to wait on it. So bed, some chests. I have a book back to Sanctuary as a common courtesy if someone comes here accidentally. I've got some really simple chests and it really kind of plays off. I should show you a little bit more there. It kind of plays off like I haven't been playing, like I really haven't been on the server, but you can find the entrance right here. Very simple. Um, yeah, so I'm going to cut the recording here and I'm going to show you guys the rest of my base. Whew. I'm still really happy how the disguise works, so to speak. So I'll, I'll show you guys. I just, uh, I just don't want, uh, I don't want to blow it away because a lot of the Motley Crafters still haven't seen how to get in. So I kind of want to let them figure it out first. So this hasn't changed. Uh, cows and a grinder, Enderman and a grinder, uh, lumber production. Real simple there. Uh, let's see. I think this is new. I got a bunch of these essence ore berries, and with these vacuum hoppers, let's see. Yep, essence ore berries, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is very simple. The autonomous activators right click on the bushes. Now what that does is that jettisons the experience. The experience at that point is an item. It's the essence ore berry. The hopper picks it up, stuffs it in the chest. The chest then is pulled, um, the items are removed from the chest through an item transfer node. And that pipes into another chest, which pipes down to this autonomous activator, which, since it now has the item of the essence berry, it right clicks and it actually spills out the experience orbs, which are then sucked in by experience set vacuum hoppers, which spill that into an open blocks. A, um... oh, okay, so here's how this should work. There's the berries. It right clicks, it drops the experience orbs, experience orbs are picked up by the vacuum hopper, it dumps it into the tank, the tank then goes into a tesseract, tesseract goes somewhere else. R clear as mud, right? <laughs> then I put the experience uh, drain, just in case I've got anything sitting around. 
that's a workable solution. It's not pretty, it's not extravagant, but it works. I always go for function over anything else. I want it to work and work well before I put bells and whistles and crap on it. Uh, now that I'm just jumping back and forth, uh, smeltery as normal. This is new. I've added six steel tanks from Railcraft. This was the easiest way for me to get my liquid storage going. Now, now that I'm a little farther along, I could do bedrockium tanks. Or they're called drums, I think. A normal drum, yeah, a normal normal drum holds a quarter of a million millibuckets, or I don't know if those are buckets, but it holds a lot of volume. With a bedrockium drum holding seventy or sixty-five million, whatever fluid units. Now to put that in perspective, these steel tanks are the largest I could make them by railcraft specifications. This is 20 million millibuckets capacity, so we're talking a little under 21,000 buckets. More than enough for my needs, so that's why I went this route, but I might go the tanks anyhow. What I've been doing since last is oil, um, the Tesseract drops the experience right here, liquid XP. Uh, liquid essence from my cow moodering, you know, murdering cows is a moodering. Uh, biofuel, uh, blank, and then lava. So I'm not too sure what to do with this. But the thing I'm very proud of is I set it all up with one tesseract. This one tesseract is only allowed to receive fluid. I just wanted to get everything in my base with as few tesseracts as possible. These use item or liquid transfer nodes with a filter with a particular you know item filter use on it so XP bucket and you just put the bucket in there and a speed upgrade and these work great this works absolutely fantastic so you can have several liquids coming to the system at any given time the tesseract will pump it into whichever group and then I'm not too sure how I want to get the liquids back out but it's been very simple so far taking the biofuel into consideration I'll just fall down here really simple I've got a transfer node liquid out of here with a 20 speed upgrade again and these are transfer nodes hooked up to biofuel generators all this is doing is generating energy using biofuel very simple very clean process oh this one doesn't even look like it's running for some reason but it is this pipes into another tesseract i know i'm a little tesseract heavy and i don't usually care to do that but it's definitely been working out for what i need and let's pop back as myself. Okay. Um, I'm not too sure where to go from here. I started with barrel construction. That's been the key focus of my storage until, of course, I was able to get into ME. Now, with Applied Energistics 2, this has been a complete rework of the ME system and how it works. It's awesome. It's absolutely awesome, and when I first started working with it, I didn't like it. I thought it was very click intensive. It was a little too complex, but when you really sit down and think of it, for the bang for the buck, it's totally worth it. I love the way they redid it. Um, to, in my head, the assemblers, the molecular assemblers, replaced the automatic construction that a multi block structure that you used to build with the co processors and all that stuff. Um, processing is completely different. It makes way more sense now to me. Um, this wiring, uh, just very simple. Each of your devices that are hooked up to your ME system require a channel or a communication path. So this is a very quick example. I've got three deep store and a better barrel. Each of these have a storage bus hooked up to them. I need a channel each. So these need four channels with a normal Fluix cable only maintaining eight. When you run out of channels, something shuts off. You can't just, I mean, channels are how the system communicates with the controller. The controller's, com excuse me, the controller's completely different this go round as well. It's very complex, or at least it's far more complex than what it was, but it's an excellent change. I really like it. It's, it shows a little more versatility. You need a little more creativity. You can't just slap a bunch of cable together and expect it to work. So the tutorial on that from the creator, I can't remember his name right now. Excellent. Excellent. Well done. Good explanation of how it all works. I love it. Aside from that, now that I'm done gassing out about that, the QED or the quantum entanglement doohickey, <laughs> I 
I guess I never really read that, um, is used for crafting certain items like the item transfer node and the magnum torch, to mention two things that I've used it for. Um, then this is just very, very simple. Here's my test rack for items. I'm receiving items. I send out fluid and energy. The fluid, of course, is coming from the bioreactor. And this is how I'm powering my mine in our mining world. So I don't I don't really want to go super duper in depth and gas on about, oh, this is my setup. It's amazing. I'm super smart or anything. But it's absolutely great. With the new Direwolf 20 pack, really cool upgrades with a lot of the mods that have happened. I really like it gonna pop over to our mining world and this is a world that Spectral created and this is what we do with every iteration of the Motley Craft server. We create a world that can just be mined out and it looks like I mined out all these chunks. There we go. We just we create a world that just gets mined out. It doesn't matter anything else. So that way we're not really tearing up the overworld even though there's really no danger in doing so. I just like it a lot better if we just create a world and then just mine it up. That way when we're done with it, we can just delete it and recreate it. No big deal. No loss. And what you could do on top of that is I can go into the server, delete this world, which is number 13. Mistcraft will recreate the world from scratch as if we'd never been in it. So even if there was a possibility we could mine the whole thing flat, we could come back and it'd be back again. So there's, there's nice ways around that. I've been working a lot with this. Ender quarries? Very nice. Reduce a lot of block lag. And normally I go for the build craft quarries. These work out great. Uh, I was hoping I could actually see it in action. Show it off a little bit. What this does is instead of the build craft quarry that actually loads all the chunks you're working with, this one only loads. Uh, is that oil or is that slime? Or is that sludge it's sludge um, as I was trying to say the build craft mine or quarry loads all the chunks what the ender quarry does is it only loads the chunk it's working on only loads the chunk it's working on. Blah, I can talk um, I think it might be glitched because I don't see what it's working on now even though it's got a ton of energy so it might need to be reseeded but it's a little pricier than the build craft one but since it reduces leg and I'm the server admin I can't tell you how nice that feels <laughs> Uh, now that we're starting to tech up all the Motley Crafters, it looks like we're all being a little more uh, processor friendly, so to speak. Uh, trying to be mindful of the resources that are consumed by the processes we do, which is very nice for me. Aside from that, I just wanted to show off where I was with my base so far. I really hope that the other Motley Crafters show off what they got, or uh, you want to come visit sometime, you're more than welcome. I'm trying to get some new recruits, so if you'd like to see what's going on, feel free and uh yeah i guess i'll uh i'm gonna get back to work so i'm gonna catch you guys next time